morning everybody. I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. We're headed out to Hortonville, Wisconsin. We should be there tonight. I'm just starting my day here, just had a shower. And I walked in, I looked at the mirror and I sighed. I said, you know, I kind of miss my beard. I think I look a little goofy without it. What do you think? Should I grow it back? Maybe I'll wait till the end of summer and I'll start growing it back. I will grow it back again, at least for next winter, but I might just start now. So by the time winter hits next year, it's already at a good good length. Yeah. It's sort of like a piece of me left, but I did it, I wanted to do it. I wanted to cut it off because it was, uh, it's really hard to maintain it, especially on the road. But uh, yeah, we'll see. And I didn't really like the way it had grown out and I trimmed it, the way I trimmed it. You now we can start over, it'll grow back. It always grows back. Anyways, we're just uh, getting going here, getting the truck ready to go. I already showered, like I said. I walked the weasel. Now we just gotta make sure the truck is all set and ready. We'll be off to the races. I, get, I think we'll have the wind in our sails today, so that'll help a lot. So I've got this idea. Let's turn our lights on and go. Do a tug test first. Make sure the trailer's not gonna fall off. Make double sure. Okay. Uh, I was gonna pull through there, but there's a truck coming in there now. There's a guy walking here. I guess we will. Oh, I can make it. I can make it. One of the good things about Volvo's, you can turn on a dime. I can turn sharper than my pickup. So we still have our load of lumber on behind us that we picked up in Alberta, out there in Sundra. And we're taking it down to Wisconsin. Somebody down there needs some wood. I'm waiting for you, bud. You give her. Don't slip now. That's quite the mustache. That is impressive. Nice. Makes me miss my beard. A little slippery here. Okay. So we have 800 kilometers, 500 miles to go today. There's a lot of cars back here with the trucks today. I've seen them buzzing around. We're here at the rest stop for Minneapolis. I'm doing a quick little walk around, making sure my load is still as it should be. That nothing has veered from the correct path. Looks like everything is still going good here. Looks like everything's still going good here. See, this is how it was loaded with those with it not being completely flush like that. They're all jammed in there real well. I can't move it forward or back. But hauling this economy lumber, it's sort of like, I call it garbage lumber, but it's, it's economy lumber. It's not for like building anything important. It's the cheap stuff. Uh, you gotta be careful hauling this stuff because if you strap it down wrong, uh, the center pieces like that can actually still stay loose and they can wiggle their way out, fall onto the deck here, and then fall into traffic behind you in the worst case scenario. It can also do the same thing in the front and slowly vibrate its way out in the front. Uh, so I've learned that. I've never lost any boards or anything, don't worry. But uh, I've had them sort of uh, shift a little bit on me. That's why I come back here and look all the time, make sure nothing has moved since I've touched it. I'll, I'll get up here in a second yet and push on them, make sure that they're still jammed in there. But uh, you gotta tie it down pretty tight. Because if you... If you don't wrench on it as hard as you can, putting your full body weight and using gravity to your best advantage to tighten those straps as tight as you possibly can, you might be losing some boards into traffic and then you got, you got a lot of problems. And then you got a lot of problems. You got paperwork, uh, it could kill somebody. And then you got more than paperwork. You got a lot of explaining to do then. And uh, good luck convincing a judge and jury that uh, that was a justifiable oopsie. I'm pretty sure they're gonna come for you with everything they can and the full weight of the law, so. 
as truck drivers, we are considered professionals out here, right? Professional truck drivers. So that kind of thing is not supposed to happen on our watch. So if it does, the full weight of responsibility falls on you, the driver. That is, that's your responsibility. This load here, this is my load. Anything, anything that happens to this load between now and when I get to my destination, the forklift takes it off or when I get my straps off, right? If they, if they dump it or break it or hurt themselves taking it off the trailer, it's not my fault, obviously, they're, obviously it's their fault then. But from between the shipper, as soon as it's on the trailer, I gotta tie it down, that's my responsibility. I gotta get it there safely, that's my responsibility. Anything that happens in between there falls squarely on me. So you gotta be able to prove. That's why we got cameras on our trucks now, right? We have lots of cameras on there just to record everything to make sure, to make double sure that if anything does happen, that's not our fault that causes you know bodily harm or injury or uh, damage or anything, anything whatsoever. If it wasn't our fault, we have to prove it. Because if we can't prove that it wasn't our fault, we are guilty. It's kind of backwards. It's guilty until proven innocent for the most part. So protect yourselves out there. Make sure you have a dash camera. Make sure that you take measures to protect yourself because uh, lawyers are ruthless to truckers. We'll just say that, they're ruthless. And it's very, very, very expensive to fight them. Just protect yourself. And make sure that you secure your freight properly. That is key. Make sure you secure your freight properly. I wish they wouldn't have left them poking out like that. I really don't like that, but they're jammed in there. I cannot move them. So we're just keeping an eye on it. So you gotta stop, check your load, check your load. Make sure, make sure, make double sure, sure. Make quadruple sure. And when people make fun of you, for making sure too many times and double checking too many times, just ignore them and check again. <laughs> I climb up here. You see what I had to do here, in the top here, I was having that problem here, right? Uh, I would, I put a strap over the top and what it did was it bowed the top layer of wood. And then the second layer had absolutely no friction on it, nothing holding it down. So what I did was I, I put my tarps across the top here and strapped my tarps down as tight as I possibly could onto the lumber, equalizing the weight and friction across the whole thing, right? And now each and every one of these boards is stuck in place using friction, right? So none of them can move now. But that's just one creative way you can sort of even out the weight. If you got a board that can go all the way across, that works too. These are only six foot, uh, pieces so you can't exactly use them but you know what I mean right just get creative get creative okay it doesn't really matter so much how it's tied down it matters a little bit but <laughs> the, the most important thing is that it doesn't fall off your trailer that's the most important thing whatever you got to do to keep that firmly on your trailer firmly not just I'm glad it didn't move. No, it's got to be on there to the point where you know it's not going to move. So far, so good. We'll stop in a little while and check it again. Flying J. Roberts, Wisconsin. It's enough yapping about trucks and stuff. This is a truck entry, my friend. Truck entry. Truck entry. It says, it says right there. It says, it says right there on the sign. You don't care. Okay. All right then. Another guy. No, he's going to the exit. Okay, there you go. Yeah, uh, the other one's the exit. There you go. <laughs> this place is always a gong show. It's just the parking lot is really weirdly put together. So no parking spot is really easy to get into. There's only a few and those are always taken right away, obviously. The pumps aren't too busy right now, but usually when I come here, it's like a backup all the way around the back here. See all these parts, parking spots on the left here? These guys always get blocked in because people park in the no parking zone to my right along that fence there. And then none of these people can get out. I've seen it so many times. So I don't even stop here usually, unless I can get here really early and get one of these nice spots in the back. All right, all the way around here, all the way around here, all this paid parking on the left. 
That's what I think of that. <laughs> Paid parking. You know how much money these people are raking in already? Now they want to rake in a bit more by charging us to park. I know it's common in Europe to pay to park. I get it. It's not a thing here, and they're trying to make it a thing. So don't give them any ideas, my European friends, okay? Stop giving them these ideas. We, I'm not paying for parking. It's ridiculous. We just went over how expensive it is to run a truck already. Now they want to take more of our money. <laughs> now you know why drivers are always like, hey, no, stop taking our money. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. You sleep well, man? Back then over there. We're at a truck stop here in New London, Wisconsin. Just about to drop off these sticks. Still got all this lumber behind me. This is gonna be a good day. Beautiful day outside. Snow is melting, sun is shining. We're in America. It's gonna be a good day. So we're gonna drop this lumber off. Then we'll start tomorrow with vlog, but let's go find this place first. It looks like kind of a small yard to get into. Hopefully they're not busy. I sort of need to get unloaded quickly so I can get to my reload. It's about three and a half hours to get down to where I'm gonna be loading my next load of steel. That load's taking me, yeah, I already told you that load's taking me up to Winnipeg, right? the shades today so our wheel wheels are rolling my logbook has been kicked into driving which means my day has officially officially begun no take backsies once those wheels are turning you can't change that 14 hours from this moment I have to be stopped and going to bed. Alright, this is the place. It's pretty tight. I think I'm supposed to come in from here. I'm coming in from here anyway. Hopefully they can get me unloaded real quick. Looks like they make pallets here. Nice wide. I'm guessing they're just gonna unload me right in the middle of the yard here. Only place that would make sense. Or maybe over there. No. I'll park right in the middle here for now anyway. I want to see if I can find somebody. I really want to put it all in the shed right here. But I was kind of thinking they'd probably want to unload me back in the open where uh, you know nothing could get damaged and then you know just bring the wood up here with the forklift. No, they wanted to unload right here. So, that's their choice. Got another one. Canadian lumber. Gonna be turned into American pallets. And then they're gonna put stuff on them. Actually, there's, I don't think they put the, I think they just sell the pallets. And then other people put stuff on the pallets. And who knows where those pallets will end up. Maybe they'll like ship stuff in containers across the seas to Europe or something, or Australia or somewhere else. Maybe to you. Wouldn't that be a small world? I wish I could put my stamp on every piece of wood so that you can check the pallets when you unload them if, if that's what you do. Send me a picture of it. The wood I delivered here got turned into a pallet that got delivered across the world to you. Wouldn't that be cool? You never know. You never know. So from here, uh, my GPS is saying we got about four hours to get to our next destination. We don't got much time for stopping. We'll have about time to stop for one coffee break and bathroom break, and that's it. That is it. It's a bright day out, but we're gonna book it. So I gotta reload at three o'clock, and we'll be there at about 2.30. Uh, too much time to play with. 
I'm gonna do that in tomorrow's video though. Thanks for hanging out for me today. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe, hit one of these these boxes around my head here. The bottom, I think I have them. You, if you click my head, it'll take you to the screen where you can subscribe. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.